You've been introduced to the main parts of the female reproductive systems. I'd like to talk to you about one of the problems that can arise within the female reproductive system, cervical cancer. You'll learn what cervical cancer is, how it's caused, and some of the ways it can be treated and prevented. But before we go too far, let's take a closer look at the cervix. The cervix is a cylinder-shaped neck of tissue that connects the vagina and the uterus. There are two portions that make up the cervix, the ectocervix and the endocervix. And the overlapping area between these regions is called the transformation zone, which is the zone where cancerous tumours most commonly arise. This area is lined with specialised cells called squamous epithelial cells, which are continually renewed during a female's life. Normally, these cells grow and multiply in an orderly way. However, in rare circumstances, the cells undergo changes and can become cancerous. So cancerous really means that the cells are dividing and growing in an unregulated, uncontrolled manner, and often there is a potential that this uncontrolled growth can spread to other parts of the body. Cervical cancer is the third most common cancer of the female reproductive tract. It's not as common as cancer of the endometrial lining of the uterus or ovarian cancer, but it is sadly responsible for around 5% of all cancer deaths in women. It most commonly occurs in women over the age of 35. Thankfully now, many countries offer widespread screening programs and targeted vaccines for early detection, which has led to reduced incidence and early detection of precancerous stages of the disease. The incidence of cervical cancer is higher in developing countries that do not have access to cervical screening and prevention programs. In those countries, cervical cancer remains the second most common type of cancer and cause of cancer deaths in women. So what actually causes cervical cancer? Well, in the largest proportion of cases, viruses actually do. These viruses are called human papillomaviruses, or HPV for short, and can be detected in almost all cases of cervical cancer. There are actually about 200 different types of HPV viruses. Some are not very dangerous and cause things like warts or cold sores. But some HPV viruses are much more risky and can be easily spread during direct sexual contact through the skin and mucous membranes of infected people to their partners. They can be spread by vaginal, anal and oral sex. There are 50 genital HPV types, 15 are classified as high risk, and of these, types 16 and 18 account for the majority of HPV-related cancers in females. Some of the high-risk HPV infections can occur without any symptoms. They may go away within one to two years and do not cause cancer. However, some can persist and cause changes in the cervical lining that could ultimately lead to cancer. The risk factors that are related to HPV exposure include the early age of first intercourse, having multiple sex partners, having a high risk sexual partner, for example, a partner that has multiple sexual partners or known HPV infection, a history of sexually transmitted infections, for example, chlamydia or genital herpes. And also, if you have a disease like HIV that causes suppression of your immune system. There's also some evidence that cigarette smoking also increases the risk of getting cervical cancer. So you might be thinking that the best prevention against cervical cancer would be to never have sex with a man or a woman. Well, your risk would be very low, but luckily there are ways that you can reduce the risk of getting cervical cancer without going to such extremes. A very successful vaccine called Gardasil has been developed. Gardasil is directed against the strains of HPV known to cause cervical cancer. Australia was the first country to adopt a national publicly funded HPV vaccination program, and now other countries are following. The original vaccine made protected against two of the high-risk HPV types, types 16 and 18, which cause 70% of the cervical cancers in women and 90% of all HPV-related cancers in men.
It also protected against two low-risk HPV types, which cause 90% of genital warts. An updated vaccine called Gardasil 9 was launched recently, which provides fully vaccinated females with protection against 90% of cervical cancers because it protects them against all of the HPV strains in the original vaccine, as well as the next five most common HPV types found associated with cervical cancer. The pap smear is a test that involves collecting cells from the cervix and examining them for abnormal changes. Often at the time of a pap smear, an HPV detection test is also performed. This test determines whether the nucleic acids, the DNA and the RNA from the HPV virus are present. It is thought to be even more accurate than the traditional pap smear test for detecting very early stages of the disease and will likely soon replace the pap smear for widespread screening purposes. In fact, in Australia, the pap smear has now been replaced by the new cervical screening test, which looks specifically for HPV. The method of sample collection is the same, but whereas the pap smear looked for the abnormal cells in the cervix, the new cervical screening test looks for HPV. Australian women will only need to be tested every five years instead of every two, and testing doesn't begin until the woman is 25 years of age. The age used to be 18. The changes to the National Cervical Screening Program in conjunction with the HPV vaccinations are expected to reduce the number of women diagnosed with cervical cancer by at least 15%. If the cervical screening test is positive for HPV, the woman will straight away be referred for further tests or will be monitored and have a repeat test done in 12 months. This really depends on the type of HPV found and also whether the cervical cells have started to change. Often the early stages of cervical cancer don't have any symptoms and therefore can go undetected. Sometimes women may have irregular or heavy vaginal bleeding or bleeding after sexual intercourse. So again, this really highlights the importance of screening to detect any changes as early as possible. The new cervical screening tests can identify women at a higher risk of developing cervical cancer and also monitor or treat them to prevent cervical cancer occurring.